Do you remember when I was talking about Big O in a couple of the last videos I've done? But I don't know if I'm autistic. I don't know. But I feel it as growth, but I know how to express in a way. Right? Like, whatever that, whatever the art is, that's also the next important step is to allow the expression to happen so that it can get better in what is seen as, uh, or what is usually misunderstood. In Big O, which is the show I mentioned before, it was an anime. It had two seasons, and I watched them on Adult Swim. This show was about clones trying to become original. The guy who created this scenario, his name was Rosewater. I can't remember if it's Alex Rosewater or Alan Rosewater. I think his son is like... Gordon Rosewater, but Gordon was also a clone too, so it didn't really matter. Anyway, um, Mr. Rosewater was part of a group of, um, individuals who, after the event, decided to keep trying to create clones of all the people who originally existed and all the memories that were stored within them, right? Um... He likened it to uh, cloning tomatoes and said, if we can inject enough memory and enough realness, authenticity in these fake tomatoes, eventually, after we've been cloning them so long, they'll taste like the real tomatoes. Matrix system shutdown may be going on. Yeah, but you can't shut down a matrix when you can't stop people from who are awake from... She can't finish. Shut down, whatever that's supposed to be. Just like, okay, if you're shutting down... <laughs> it's just like, well, that 24 hours may feel like 20 years. She doesn't remember. She doesn't remember. She doesn't remember the last time. We went through the Matrix shutdown. Because at the end of Big O, um, Big Venus, which is basically a, basically a shutdown system of the Matrix, will come in and destroy everything in order for a new Paradigm City to be raised from the ground up and built anew with all these new clones to once again try to put authentic memories into fake tomatoes. Hell, the episode where he was trying to figure out this mystery, a fake R. Dorothy was stalking him, trying to stop him from figuring this information out. And in the original Dor R. Dorothy that he had with him, the one I was talking about before, Happened to be sitting in his Megadus, and the Megadus came in and saved him. He's just like, how did you get it to listen to you? And she was like, I didn't do anything. It did it on its own. Um, what it is, is those who pilot these Megaduses, um, Big O, Big Duo, Big Frau, Big Venus, Leviathan, Behemoth, Dagon, Orisil, all of them work as gods, and those who pilot them in their cockpit are considered defendants. That's why when you jump in the cockpit in this show, much like Roger the Negotiator would, because that's the main character, Roger Smith the Negotiator, it would put out cast... cast thee in the name of God, ye not guilty. Rosewater's son, Gordon Rosewater, got in the cockpit and at some point it marked him as guilty, which I'm not, I, like, there's a lot of mysteries in that show that I still don't understand, but if, the, if everything was answered, it wouldn't make any sense. A lot of people who are clones don't remember the last shutdown. Of course, you're not supposed to, like she said. Um, those 24 hours could actually feel like 20 years. Um, and what was that thing called? The um, 
Caligula, Caligula, um, the, um, Cal, um, it, it, one of those stages where it's like the 4,000 year thing or something like that, um, you know, Kali Ma, or Kali, or something like that, I'm not sure, but it's like, I think we're about to get another shutdown. A lot of progression on the stage where things are happening um and i feel as though this whole script we've been following for at least the past couple years now is um i think you're trying to avoid it i think What's happening, especially with a lot of these test dummies, is I think it's a hope or a last ditch effort to delete enough memories and um, tomatoes so the matrix shutdown does not happen. Um, another thing that's concerning to me, um, you know, the Bible, people will read that and look at it and say, oh, well, this was written by people, different people, thousands of years ago, right? And honestly, I'm starting to think this is a lot like the Ninth Gate, where someone isn't reading up on, um, certain things that are going to happen if you follow certain steps i think it's more like it's telling a prophecy because you know let's be clear um what was it the slaves of egypt were in captivity for what 400 years and america is actually egypt What doesn't make sense with this theory that maybe, just maybe, this Bible was written. The one that we got, the one that people use and try to celebrate and all of that stuff is actually, um, shit that is prophesying what's meant to happen soon. Um, this is a theory, a game theory, but... Well, it's, it's ironic, but still, it, it, it kind of makes sense. Um, America's Egypt. Then that means the black people, or those of particular melanin, melanin skin. And technically, um, you don't even have to be black to have that. You could be any color. Um, at this point, color is not an established matter anymore. It's about who's got the right blood. Right? Just like the Wendigo, um, you would have the right blood and be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Or be somewhere you know you should not be. And still go anyway, thinking that you're not going to be, uh, seeing the Wendigo. Right? If America is Egypt, then those who were enslaved would have been the chosen people, correct? You know, I'm not one to really make a lot of theories. I'm not one to really say much of anything, but, um... I'll tell you right now, there are a lot of people. My people. Who are neck and neck on each other. Especially the men. To me, I feel like Jesus Christ was a black man and he was sacrificed in order to keep certain people in power. And the more people celebrate his name, the more that power stays in dedication, really. It, but what's happening is they're convincing the women. To hate the black man. And they've convinced the black man to believe that he is a reigning god. Not realizing that god got sacrificed by peasants. Useless, angry mobs of people who used his blood to sacri 
sa basically sanctify their ability to get in a heaven. If that even is existent. Or to make us a heaven here on this planet because it's better than where they fucking came from. Whoever that might be. Because, um... There are definitely clones on this planet of those who were here who don't realize what they are or even remember the last time this shit happened. And then there are those who are actually residents of this planet who are either completely unaware or they're just now figuring out what is actually going on. Because if you are a resident, if you do belong here, Your people are turning against each other. All this poison brought into the home, the children, the family lives. If they can sustain enough of them, if they can make this more of their home than it is our home, they're safe. But that matrix shut down, though. That matrix shut down is like a, that's a threat. It is not meant for the people who are actually supposed to be here, who actually belong here, who belong to this planet, who share the same as everything else, right? So, and it doesn't mean that to stuff, because you're part of this planet does not mean that you're not part of everything else. That is not how this works. What it is, is uh, you existing here with whoever is a problem for them. Because you're authentic. You, don't, you aren't carrying the false memories around with you. You have memories, yes. But it doesn't make you a clone, it doesn't make you an NPC, it doesn't mean that you don't belong here. However, what you're carrying is what they need in order to reinforce their tomatoes to be real. But you're alive. And they can't give it to their tomatoes if you're already alive. People will be able to tell fake tomatoes as soon as they taste a real one. And as soon as they have a taste of the real one, they will recognize all of the fake ones. And that's a problem. For them. And for you. And for me. Because um, that means that there needs to be an elimination. We can't have authentic tomatoes when we're trying to sell people real ones. Or fake ones, I meant. Or at least they're trying to sell them as real ones, but uh, it's kind of hard to do when you have real ones that taste so much sweeter and more authentic than the fake ones, right? This person here is speaking. As they're speaking, they're sitting in the exact same spot they were sitting in 25 years ago, doing almost the exact same thing, except this time they're not talking to the person. Who they were originally talking to, they're talking into a camera, not realizing they were playing the exact same role they played before. They don't know this. I have no desire to inform them of this. They can figure it out on their own if they have it already, but I don't know if they ever will. I don't know if they'll ever listen, and I don't think that they'll ever believe, but I will tell you right now, between dying alive and being of the living dead... The only people who ask you if you're alive or dead are people who have already died. That's the only time you should ever ask if someone is alive or dead, is if you are already dead. Um, if you've returned 
Back to your Schrodinger's box, your Schrodinger's cat box. If you're the cat, he went back to see if you were actually dead or not. Well, you either find your body or it takes you a minute to. Maybe you stall for a while. But once you see that there's more than one of you, terrified for a long long period of time like well before I ever got into the world like my first one or two jobs right I remember people would come up to me telling me that um oh I could have swore you work somewhere else I could have swore you were somewhere else and they would constantly say this to me and I would just be weirded out like what the fuck are y'all talking about but like um I never ran into my double I almost did, though. I didn't realize it. At the time, I thought my coworker was joking with me when they said, Are you doing back here? You were just here. And I looked at them, and I remembered being like, I wasn't just here. What are you talking about? I just pulled in with my car and such. And looking back on that now, it's kind of like, um, what would have happened if I actually would have ran into the person who possibly was or was not me? Because that was one of those things that kind of stuck with me, and it, it wasn't something I thought about until more recently, and especially after seeing this person's video, and then deciding to look up info about Big O, only to find out that there is actually an algorithm formula called the Big O And that actually tripped me up. I've never really studied algorithms and computing like that. So it was rather complicated. <clears throat> but it's like a constant amongst variables sort of things. But once, but you got to make sure that it's not overloaded for the most part. Because it basically tells you your capacity, space, time, all of that jazz. But if it gets out of control, what do you do? Do you change the formula or do you subtract some things? <sighs> you know, all this business with the plague. This is a diary for everyone to have an antidote. It seems like the antidote's not going to work. So it's kind of like, um, useless in a sense. It, well, it's not even useless. It's just not going to work. It hasn't been working. It's never worked. It was never meant to work. I mean, that, that's, that's not... That's not its purpose. It's not supposed to work. Um, how can you assume that this antidote will work on something um, that was literally made to go against certain types? But if you're an original, it doesn't work on you. And it would probably make you sick. When I was deployed to Afghanistan, I had to take malaria medication. And what happened to me was I actually got sunburned because I took it. Like, it made my skin... Like, I, like never have I ever heard of a black person sunburning. But when I was taking those malaria pills, they made me sunburn, right? I stopped taking them. Months later, I get back in the States and I'm at the Fort Belvoir. They want me to take malaria medication again because it's just like, it's just a precautionary because, you know, we want to make sure you don't have the disease, right? I took this for a week. I could not swallow anything. My esophagus, my stomach lining was all inflamed from this shit. 
I explained it to the doctor, told me to take care, take me, taking it, and they were like, um, oh, no, 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 you keep taking that. You need it. And it was like, I'm not going to keep taking this. I know it's making me sick. Why are you telling me to continue to take medicine that I know is making me sick? Because I wasn't like this until I started taking this medication. Stop taking it. All the problems went away. The doctor asked me if I finished the malaria pills. I was like, no, it's making me sick. I told you that. And they were like, well, it was extremely important for you to take that so nobody got malaria. But if I didn't never got malaria, why would I keep taking medicine for it? Mind you, I was deployed in Afghanistan, Helmand region, Camp Leatherneck, sand, sand everywhere, everything's dry. Malaria is normally carried by mosquitoes, and mosquitoes lay their eggs in water. Why do I need to take malaria medication in an area where the carriers of malaria pretty much don't exist? And now I think it's because, um, <sighs> you know, it's kind of like if you spray weed killer on a tomato plant. Like old school weed killer, not the kind that's uh, been modified to where they can't tell that they're slowly being killed along with the weed. So, I don't know. Anyway. It was just the thought. I don't mean to freak you out for Christmas, but that was definitely something that's been on my mind at least the last couple days. Has it been like three, four days? Probably three or four days now, but yeah. I've just been sitting here thinking about it over and over ever since I mentioned um, that song. Because I didn't realize that the robot's name was Amadeus, and I thought that was the name of the person who wrote it. But no, it was Chopper. That it was just like, I used to love that show. What was going on with that show? And then I started looking more, and then I found all that other info today. And it was just like, <clears throat> huh. What do you know? Be safe, stay suspicious, and be careful. Love your face. Bye.